Greetings to all of you, brothers and sisters and guests. Merry Christmas. I stand here before you this evening to tell you a story. It is your story. It is my story because it's the human story. It's an ancient story. Indeed, it is the narrative of all things. It is the discourse of God's dealings with the world and with us. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. He formed our first parents. He put them in the midst of a garden, in the midst of a pristine and a perfect and an unfallen world. He told them they could eat from any tree of the garden that they wanted to, except for the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For in the day that they ate from that tree, they would surely die. A serpent slides into the scene, seducing the woman with lies that begin with, hath God really said? And so the woman, and then ultimately the man, listen to the serpent, forsake the word of God, and eat the forbidden fruit. And calamity and curse and death invade the world as judgments from Almighty God. Every sin, every crime, every murder, every theft, every lie, every cancer, every estranged spouse, every fatherless or motherless child, every groan, every grief, every fear, all the sum total of human misery traces back to and is a consequence of our first parents' sin and God's curse on their sin, all of it. And yet even in the midst of God's fearful curses on their sin, he offers us a word of hope. You remember what he says to the serpent in Genesis 3. I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. And you remember that strange language that God uses there. Enmity between your seed, serpent, and the woman's seed. Seed refers to offspring. The woman will have seed. She will have offspring. And the serpent will have his offspring as well. The seed of the woman and the seed of the serpent are going to be at war with each other from then on out. The serpent will injure his enemy's foot, but the woman's seed, her offspring, will crush the serpent's head. And don't miss this. If we go into the parking lot and I run over your foot in my car, it will hurt and you will get better. If I run over your head, it will be a mortal wound and you will die. When God speaks to the serpent, he says that the serpent will injure the seed of the woman's foot, but that the seed of the woman will crush the serpent's head. Meaning there is coming from this woman someone, someone who's going to strike the death blow to the devil and all of his works. So now this enormous question hangs over the rest of our Bible, which is the rest of our story. Who is this seed of the woman? When is he coming to rescue us from death and from all the works of the devil? Will God remember his promise and send to us the seed of the woman? Well, guess what? Death reigns from Adam until Moses, just like the Bible, just like the Lord said. No one survives. No one's getting out of this fallen world alive. As the centuries and the millennia wear on, the body count piles too high to even measure. All die. The fear of death is laying on the world like a dark sheet. And the misery of the world and the futility of this life become the human condition. Where is the seed of the woman? Will God remember? Centuries pass and God appears to the man named Abraham. And he says in Genesis 12, Go forth from your country and from your relatives and from your father's house to the land which I will show you. And I will make you a great nation. And I will bless you and make your name great. And so you shall be a blessing. And I will bless those who bless you. And the one who curses you I will curse. And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. And then God says to Abraham and e that even though his wife Sarah is barren. 
God says he will be a father. The promised seed will come from his own body, God says. In Genesis 22, he says, I will greatly bless you. I will greatly multiply your seed as the stars of the heavens and as the sand which is on the seashore. And your seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. And in your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed because you've obeyed my voice. The seed of the woman is coming to defeat all the enemies of God. God tells Abraham. Who will the seed of the woman be to accomplish this? Well, next comes Isaac. Then comes Jacob. Then the 12 sons of Israel. And when Jacob, Israel, is an old man and he's lying on his deathbed, he prophesies over one of his seed, over one of his sons. He prophesies over Judah. And he says this. He says, Judah is a lion's cub. From the prey, my son, you have gone up. He stooped down. He crouched as a lion and as a lioness. Who dares rouse him? The scepter shall not depart from Judah. The scepter, that's what a king holds. The scepter will not depart from Judah, nor the ruler's staff from between his feet, until tribute comes to him, and to him shall be the obedience of the peoples. Now we know that the seed of the woman will come from Abraham through the line of Judah, and this seed of the woman will have a scepter that will not pass away from him, which means that he will be a king whose kingdom will never end. Who will this seed of the woman be? When and where will this king arise? Will God remember in the midst of all the misery, will God keep his promise? God's people languish for 400 years before God delivers and redeems, redeems them from the bondage of slavery in Egypt. Then God brings them into the land of promise and blesses them. And almost immediately, they rebel. Moses is long gone. Joshua and Caleb are dead. And God's people become rank idolaters in the land of promise, and they adopt the customs of the nations whom they were supposed to drive out. Days turns into months. Months turns into years. Years turn into decades, and decades turn into centuries. And aside from the occasional judge, God's people are getting worse and worse. Idolatry, murder, rape, civil war. These are the order of the day in Israel. God's people are circling the drain spiritually. Will God remember? Will God keep his promise? When will the seed of the woman appear to save God's people to rule over his enemies? And then there, in that period of the judges, in the darkest hour, God causes this little rose to sprout in the desert. And her name is Ruth. And this little lowly Gentile widow attaches herself to the Jew, Naomi, and she says, where you go, I will go, and where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. May the Lord do so to me, and more also, if anything but death parts me from you. And then God sends a man from Judah named Boaz to be her kinsman redeemer. And Ruth, the pagan Gentile, becomes grafted into the rich root of Israel, into the very tribe of Judah. And in Ruth 4, the women of Israel give Ruth's son, that she gives birth to with Boaz, she gives Ruth's son a name. It says they named him Obed. He was the father of Jesse. And Jesse is the father of David. David, the seed of the woman the man after God's own heart, the sweet psalmist of Israel, the warrior king who trampled the enemies of God under his feet, Israel's anointed Messiah and king. Is, is he the one? Are God's promises finally and ultimately coming true here? Many years after David becomes king, David had it in his heart to build a house for God, a great temple. And God says to David, David, you're not going to build me a house, but I'm going to build you a house. Not a literal house, as in a building, 
but a house as in a dynasty. A dynasty of kings that would come forth from David's own body. And God says to David through Nathan the prophet in 2 Samuel 7, When your days are fulfilled and you lie down with your fathers, I will raise up your seed after you, your offspring, your seed after you, who shall come from your body, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. And your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. So now we know the seed of the woman will be both the son of David and the son of God, and that he will rule forever on David's throne as Messiah. But God's people would forsake him again. During the period of the kings, the kings don't rule the people because they can't rule themselves. The kingdom splits. Israel in the north, Judah in the south. Israel in the north, they run headlong into idolatry. Judah in the south, they are running closely behind them. The days and weeks turn into months and years. The months and years turn into decades and centuries. Century after century of faithless kings and godless people. Will God remember? Will God keep his promise? To bring the seed of the woman so to save his people and to destroy the works of the devil. So in the wasteland of the centuries, as God's people await destruction and exile, God begins to speak to his people again through the mouths of the prophets who begin to look ahead to the time when God will indeed come through on his promise. And the great prophet Jeremiah says, Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah, not like the covenant that I made with their fathers on the day when I took them by the hand and led them out of Egypt. My covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, declares the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, declares the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And no longer shall each one say, teach, to, teach his neighbor and each his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me. From the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. And then God speaks again through the prophet Isaiah. Therefore... The Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. And again, Isaiah says, but there will be no gloom for her who was in anguish in the former time. He brought into contempt the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the latter time, he has made glorious the way of the sea, the land beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the nations. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light those who have dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them has light shone. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be on his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace there will be no end. On the throne of David and over his kingdom, to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. And then God speaks again through Micah the prophet. But you, O Bethlehem, Ephrathah, who are too little to be among the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to be ruler in Israel whose coming forth is from of old, from ancient days. Therefore he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor has given birth. Then the rest of his brothers shall return to the people of Israel. And he shall stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall dwell secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be their peace." And God speaks all of this and more through the prophets 
telling God's people that the seed of the woman is on his way. And then the prophets, like this, they go silent. No more words from God. God's beleaguered people are back in the land after exile, but the prophets' mouths have been closed. God goes silent as his people languish under oppression and godless men. 400 years, nothing. The days and weeks turn into months and years. The months and years turn into decades and centuries. Century after century, silence from Yahweh. Will God remember? Will he keep his promise? Will the seed of the woman finally appear to rescue God's people and to destroy the works of the devil? And then just when some people may have been wondering if God had forgotten, just when some would scoff and say, where is the promise of his coming? God doesn't remember or keep his promises. Just then, God speaks. And this time, he doesn't speak through a prophet or a man to an angel. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give to him the throne of his father, David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom, there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, how will this be since I'm a virgin? And the angel answered her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the most high will overshadow you. Therefore, the child born will be called holy, the son of God. And here at last, the ancient primeval prophecy that God spoke to the serpent in the garden finally comes to pass. After all the ages of years and after all the sin and misery of God's people, O little town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie. Above thy deep and dreamless sleep, the silent stars go by, yet in Thy dark streets shineth the everlasting light. The hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. The fears. Will God keep his promise? Will he remember us? Does he know we're in misery? The hopes. For unto you a child is born. For unto you a son is given. For the Lord himself will give you a sign. And the virgin shall be with child. And you'll call his name Emmanuel. The hopes and fears of all those years are met in thee tonight. The seed of the woman has come. We know where he is born. We know he's of the house and lineage of David. We know his parents' names. We know the fulfillment of prophecy that he's the seed of the woman come to crush the serpent's head. We know his name is Jesus. And this, my friends, is the true story of the world. This is your story and this is my story because this is God's answer to all of your sin, to your miseries, to your broken heart, to your failing marriage, to your cancer, to your failing body, to your fears. And to all your hopes. God's answer to all of this is Jesus. Jesus, the Son of God, has been crucified and raised for sinners. His death paid the penalty for our sins. And his resurrection offers us the hope of eternal life. Anyone, anyone 
whosoever will may come. Anyone who turns from their sin and trusts in Jesus to save them will find that all the hopes and fears of all their years have been met in him tonight. And so we let every heart prepare him room. Father, would you put it in our hearts to love you and to exalt you today at Christmas and every day. We pray simply that you would let every heart prepare him room and that you would do it in Jesus' name. Amen. i